we've got to really look at the Hornby LMS Princess Royal. This is the first yeah. release of this all new model that's come in this week. This is, it's the absolute genesis of LMS Pacific Locos, really. It's, a, it's one of the most iconic West Coast mainline world Locos as well, really, isn't it? And one of the standout express performers of the LMS. As you can see, Hornby's replicated this model absolutely beautifully here. You can see from the photos. And once we cut back to us, it's also there on the desk in front of us with two uh, appropriate, lovely Stanier coaches on the back as well. But it is you can't stress the importance of this clash really and it's fantastic to see this come back into the range in this lovely newly tooled form it is indeed and this has been developed from the duchess locomotive that hornby brought through in 2017 to really complete the set of the lms pacific locomotives there as well as mentioned it's completely new from the ground up and it's really got some innovative features in it as well it's got a full cab interior but for the first time in it's got to be around 30 or 40 years. It's a locomotive from Hornby that has the firebox flicker in it as well. Oh, wow, I didn't so even know it had that. That's it's great. It's got a really sort of good effect there as well. And it's not like it was many years ago where it was just a red bulb in the firebox, so to speak. It's really got that flicker effect as well of an LED. So you can have that on analog or digital as well. It is fully controllable with a digital decoder. So to really bring these innovations in shows that it's an absolute 21st century model. And the princess, like you say, it's got a real place in history. So it's needed this model that is an absolute just a a replica of the real life locomotives. That's it. I mean, it was the flagship for the LMS. It performed fantastically in service and on all of the top line uh, express passenger services between London and the North and Scotland. So it is really important to have this locomotive here. Obviously, you touched on some of the innovative features that we got there, but just looking at it basically as a yeah. model even, it is absolutely glorious, this one. The level of detail here is incredible. Lots of separately fitted parts on there, including what we've got on the front and the separately fitted handrails there. You've got a very nicely detailed coal load in there, a very fine coal load there, which I believe is removable. It is indeed. And then you've got this exquisite... I mean, who doesn't love Crimson Lake? And the livery here is absolutely spot on. It is absolutely fantastic. It's a really eye-catching livery as well with the shaded number numbers on there too. You get the etched nameplates which you can apply as well separately. You've got the full buffer beam pipe work that you can also put on separately as well. But a lot of details already come fitted. You can see the separate smoke box dart there. A lot of the valve gear as well. Fully exquisite detail there. And this is great for a lot of people who already have really established LMS locomotive collections. There's been a huge amount made over the past few years, ranging from the really small Hornby Pug locomotives right up to the Helgen Bayer Garretton double O as well. So the littlest and the largest and the important parts in between. So for you LMS modelists, this has got to be an essential addition. But at the same time, as I'm sure a lot of you are familiar, Princess Elizabeth is one of the two preserved as well. There's yeah. this and Princess Margaret Rose, which I believe is forthcoming in Hornby's range mm. later in 2020 as well. So if you've got a diesel layout, 1980s, 1990s, right up to the current day, this locomotive number 6201 hasn't really been off the main line in the last no. 40, 50 years in this Crimson Lake livery. So not just for you 30s, 40s modelers, but right up to the current day as well, this is the one for you. Absolutely. I, I'm glad that you mentioned that really because there are some fantastic photos of it in service thanks to that. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what you can run it with. You can see lots, obviously, with it being in preservation and on the main line, it's run to a lot of places that it wouldn't have normally as well. Yeah. So that means that it opens up a lot of different opportunities for it to run on different layouts too. And as you mentioned as well, this is not. This is just the start, really, for the Princess Royal in model form as well. We've got the initial six two zero one here today, but I believe in the next few weeks there'll be two BR variations joining the range in Express Passenger Blue and Maroon there as well. And as part of the twenty twenty range, Hornby has announced further variations for later in the year as well. So there is uh, the full story of the Princess Royal is coming through in model form, and we've, as you say, we've got the genesis here today. Yeah, this really is the start as the locomotives were introduced in the early nineteen thirties and. You can't really imagine just how different this was for the LMS at that time. With Stanier coming over from the Great Western Railway, bringing a lot of his ideas when he became the chief mechanical engineer, the LMS relied on a lot of smaller locomotive designs, mainly pairing up smaller locos rather than having singular larger locomotives here. But Stanier turned that idea completely on its head and said, the bigger the better, really. Yeah, absolutely. And then 
introduced locomotives such as the Princess Royal, that really birthed loco, such as the Duchess there as well. All the names I'm sure you guys and girls will know as well. You've got Black Fives, Jubilees, the 8F280s as well, the heavy freight locos. All of these come from the original Princess Royal, really, in yeah. that design. And they look so much different to previous LMS locomotives. You can see the Great Western development in there too. But Stanier really getting his power and that's why they were so popular. They absolutely were masters of the job. And Hornby's model is a master of its job as well. Totally. It's got a five-pole motor in there, digital socket in the tender, so you've got space for the TTS sound decoder, which is available separately as well. You can order that right now too. NEM couplings, you know the score with Hornby's steam locos by now, guys. They just are total equality all the way through. But the special thing with this is, it's like you mentioned before, it's all about the little details on this yeah. model. Of course, you've already touched on the fantastic fly firebox flicker that is present here. But there are a lot of other nice little touches, which, you know, it just adds to the overall feel of the model. One thing which I've noticed is you've got the opening uh, cab roof vents on the top. So there's two oh, yeah. separate vents there and you've got full adjustability on those. You can move it if you fancy just having it open a crack, fully closed or completely open. You've got all the options there. And it's just, it's a lovely little touch yeah. that to just give a bit of realism and give a bit of ventilation for your poor model uh, driver who's in there having to suffer with all the fumes and there's a lot of other separately fitted details on there which are just lovely you've got your separate um Valves Safety on top valves there, on there yeah. and lots of riveting on the front there, and of course you've got your sprung buffers and things like that. So it's just fantastic and to have these little touches. Hornby have really gone down to the specific details for each loco as well, whether it's got the speedometer cable on or various different fittings on there as well to make it fully accurate for the era and the loco. And we'll see those differences come through as the locomotives, the rest of the range, should I say, comes through later in the year. Absolutely. But if you can't wait until then, and you really want one of these on your layout, these are available to order right now if you click that link in the description we can get one of these out next day delivery for you today as well if you select that option before the end of the stream we can get that out for you they're available either analog digital ready for 171 pounds or if you really want to take advantage of that firebox flicker we can get you one dcc pre-fitted as well and that'll be 184.50 so it's a nice, ready to run out of the box there straight away. The beauty is we have a lot of stock, as you can see, that runs perfectly with yes. this locomotive as well. We've got these fantastic Stanier coaches here. The interesting 12-wheeler dining car there, which is yeah. a bit of an unusual one, a bit of a, and again, that Stanier design there coming through, a bit of an experimenter, wasn't yeah. he? So a bit more coming through. And the rest of the uh, other Stanier coaches there as well to complete your rakes. There's a huge range in stock, but there is a lot available on our pre-owned department as well. So if you're looking to mix things up a little bit, there is plenty out there for you. So you've got a full train there ready to go, not just the locomotive on its own. But you can also pair it, as we mentioned, with BR coaches right into the rail tour area. You've got BR Blue and Grey. You've got the Maroon coaches of private rail tour companies now as well. So if you're a double O model, I can imagine you've pretty much got something that you could run Princess Elizabeth with, really. So yeah. do take a closer look. Really have a look over some of those high quality images on our website as well. It's really worth a closer look and really worth getting an order in as well. Absolutely. We'll give you one last look at the high quality pictures here as well, just to give you one last look. Again, Crimson Lake, it's just an absolutely gorgeous yeah. livery, this one. And I think it's fantastic that this is the first one to come through because it does, it starts off, off that story and then we'll see more coming through. Yes. I'm really excited to see that BR Express Passenger Blue one because it is just a bit unusual, that one. And it's shaping up to be a lovely, a lovely colour scheme on the model too. Well, that was based on the Caledonian Railway Blue as well. So it's almost a livery that if the princesses had come maybe 20 years earlier, they might have carried, yeah. really. So it really just it shows again how that history always connects. And really. obviously the Princess Royal, it was running up to Scotland on those express services. So it's almost yes. harking back to a bit of the heritage there, isn't it? And just Absolutely. showing the, the connection up to Scotland as well. So you can always find things like that on the railway, <laughs> can't you? So that's what's so fascinating about links. it. That's it. Well, we got a lot of comments about this one. Of course we will, because it's <laughs> fantastic new tooled loco. First one of 2020 here for you. So let's go and dive right in. We've got Colin Wikes says, uh, good afternoon. Princess Elizabeth delivered yesterday and it's stunning. So already getting to grips with the That's loco it. there. Glad you enjoy it. Send us some pictures of it on your layout as well. Definitely do. We've got 700 Shunters says uh, it's a definite buy. And the LMS Princess Royal is his girlfriend's f personal favourite locomotive. So. Ah, there you go. So she may even be called Elizabeth, which in, in which case you got a perfect connection there as well. Could be a late Valentine's Day present as well. You little, never know. Little hint from us there. <laughs> um, you've got, we've got Jamie Smith here. Says great looking loco in a lovely colour. And you can always pull some matching coaches, as you can see there. Yep. 
Um, Ethan Amstutt says, looks much better than the 2003 version, uh, which he's got, so he's tempted to get it. Might be a nice little upgrade for you there. That's it. Hornby have had the Princess in the catalogue since, well, since the 1950s over various different models. But you can really tell with this, this is completely new developed and worthy of being a current day model as well. It's one of those, like with a few of the other Hornby releases we've seen over the past year or two, is that that's a staple of the Hornby range. Yes. And it's back better than ever in yeah. completely up-to-date form with a brand new tooling all the features that you'd expect from a modern loco just like we've seen with the uh the terrier and some of the other releases coming through so again another one that just had a bit of a bit bit of action pumped into it uh we've got railway music lover says uh will there be 6203 done as well he's got both of the super detail ones I believe it has been announced in the br green livery currently and it is available to pre-order right now there's a few people been asking if it will be in the as preserved livery which is the br maroon i think you can still see that at the princess royal trust in derbyshire at the moment it's not been announced yet but with this model coming through the first releases this year and more to come it's bound to be in their announcements in the future so do keep an eye on us for further liveries coming through but as Jack mentioned previously, there are a lot of different colour schemes to see on this model that have already been announced. So click that link in the description, not only for this Princess Elizabeth, but for other locos as well. That's it. Um, we've got AD Pullen says, do you think Hornby will do the loco with the smaller tender that the first three of the class had? Now that's a really good one to point out because when we were saying about the smaller locos used before, some of these really large locomotives were built with the older style smaller Fowler tender as ah, well. Right, okay. So you mainly see that behind freight locos such as the 4Fs and the, the other smaller freight locos with Midland heritage there as well. Again, it's something we might see in the future. Hornby have still got a few to bring out of these and certainly more planned for the future as well there. So. Nothing we've heard yet, but the Princess story, there's a lot more to tell. A lot of people have been asking whether they're going to develop the gas turbine, not gas turbine, sorry, the um, turbo motive as well. Yes, of course, yeah. With, with the different power system there as well, <coughs> 6202. That again, it could be something we see. Let us know, send us an ideas at hattons.co.uk email if you'd like to see it, or do get in touch with Hornby. And certainly if they do announce it, we'll be featuring it right here on platform one as well. That's it, you'll hear it here first. Um, we've got Joe Light Railway says the Princess Royal in LMS livery with the coaches looks fantastic and I'd like to see it in a train pack. Again, that might be something we see in the future. Yeah. Hornby could package some of those up together. But of course, you can buy all the separate components right now as well. The Princess, the dining car, the brake car, the Stanley Period 3 brake car, the first class vehicles, all available to order on our website right now as well. So you can get a full train on the go straight away. Um, we've got Ian B says, amazing to think that the loco is named after our present queen. Talk about history. Just shows you how time it passes does. on, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> um, we've got Steve Clues says, uh, why does the trailing bogey have no flanges on it? Now that is to allow it to get round set track curves. So with the trailing bogey, it can get caught if you had normal wheels in there with flanges. They do come with replacement wheel sets though to fit in there. So if you're running more of a fine scale layout that doesn't have set track curves, you can replace those wheels to make them look that little bit more authentic. But if you're running it on set track curves and you're worried about the flanges catching, it does come with the wheels preset. So you'll be absolutely okay to go. Perfect. And then we've got one more comment here from Kelly Ashford, which says, uh, nothing like a steam engine to put a smile on my face. So I think that just totally about sums it up there, doesn't totally it, for agree. this one. So great one. 